Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is NopeNapNarp, and today's episode of Psychology of Gaming is a bit different because, well, the topic lends itself better to the study of the physiological instead of the psychological, although it is still taught in many psych classes. But I say that because today we are talking about hormones, and before you get those cringy flashbacks to the birds and the bees talks you had with your parents all those years ago, let me start by saying we aren't talking about those hormones. Oh no, 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 no. We are steering clear away as we instead focus on the hormone epinephrine, or as you may know it better as adrenaline. Adrenaline is that hormone that gets your body ready for action in competitive or dangerous situations. It triggers what is called a fight or flight response in us, and you may have heard that term before. So today, in this episode of Psychology of Gaming, the series where we look at how psychological principles are built into games and how games can affect us psychologically, we take a look at the fight or flight mechanism and some of the ways that it can be seen in video games. Before we get into the games, let's first define the fight or flight mechanism. Biological psychology is one of the many different fields of psychology and focuses on studying the physical brain. In other words, a biological psychologist spends their career studying different brain parts and the roles that those parts play in regulating our bodies or how they are put to use in higher brain functions. The human brain serves many purposes, obviously, but one of the most crucial is keeping us safe. And so one of the pre-programmed responses that we have as humans is called the fight or flight response. This response is a reaction to danger, as your mind quickly decides to either fight back against the threat or deems it to be too threatening and so you flee as quickly as possible. I can almost guarantee you that at some point in your life, you've experienced this sensation. And if you haven't, well, go outside more often or something. So have you ever found yourself in a frightening or dangerous situation? Maybe you were out late at night and a stranger made you feel very uncomfortable. Or maybe you just watched a scary movie at home by yourself and are terrified after hearing a noise from the basement. Really, any situation that has you perceiving a sense of danger can trigger the fight or flight feeling. Now let's explain why. Your brain is constantly bringing in information about your environment, and it does this through the use of five senses. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. I mean, think about it right now. As you sit here and watch this video, your five senses are obviously pulling in visual and auditory information through your eyes and ears, but once I say it, you'll also notice the feeling of your butt and back on the chair you're sitting in. You see, even if you aren't consciously acknowledging the sensations you're bringing in, your sense organs are still doing it because the brain is constantly refreshing its understanding of the environment that it's in in order to guarantee it's in a safe situation. And when the brain is picking up information that makes it believe it's in a dangerous situation, it takes very rapid steps to ensure its preservation. After information is brought in through the five senses, the threat of danger is processed quickly in the amygdala, a part of your brain that helps regulate fear and aggression, and sends this information quickly to another part of the brain, the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus acts almost like an ambassador for the rest of the body in the brain. It's the part of your brain that controls all your involuntary body functions, such as digesting, breathing, blood pressure, and more. In a dangerous situation, the hypothalamus is what sends the message to the rest of the body that it's time for action. What this leads to is a rapid change in the body, as your heart rate begins to beat faster in order to pump blood quicker to vital organs, your lungs open up more to allow for the most oxygen intake as possible, your senses are heightened, and adrenaline is secreted throughout the body to prepare you for anything. I should note here that adrenaline secretion is not limited to just dangerous situations, but also occurs during physically taxing situations like, say, playing competitive football. 
Anyway, back to our dangerous situation, you will now subconsciously make a choice on how to deal with the threat at large. You will either view yourself as capable of dealing with the threat, or you will view it as being too dangerous for you to deal with. In the former situation, the fight part of fight or flight is triggered, and you will begin to stand your ground and go after whatever the threat is. However, if the latter part is true, and the threat is simply too dangerous, you will flee by running away as fast as possible, or looking for somewhere to hide. You see, no matter which way you react, no matter which one you choose, your body needed to take the steps to prepare to ensure your best chance of survival. So let me give some quick examples. Say you're at, I don't know, McDonald's. You're just there slamming on some nuggets and fries, and all of a sudden, a masked man runs in and loudly demands all the money in the register and is wielding a pocket knife. The situation will probably spook you a bit regardless of who you are, but depending on your comfort level with the situation, you may feel alright with confronting the man. You may size him up and say, yeah, I can handle this clown, and then go after him and take him down in order to keep other people safe. That's the fight reaction. However, the situation may be different if he's wielding a gun and brings along some other robbers that are armed as well, especially if they begin their robbery attempt by firing off some rounds into the ceiling. In this situation, no matter how tough you are, you're probably running out of there as fast as you can, in order to get yourself out of harm's way. That would be the flight reaction. Now, naturally, some people will choose to put themselves in harm's way in order to protect others regardless of the situation, and that would be part of the fight reaction. No matter what you choose, fight or flight, your brain is trying to restore that sense of comfort and safety, and once the threat is neutralized or you've gotten far enough away from it, you'll begin to return to normal levels. So hopefully that explanation makes sense as we transition into thinking about this fight or flight mechanism in video games. Before we get into it, let me say this. I don't think that any developer out there has ever said, hey, let's make a video game about fight or flight reactions. Instead, I think it's something that is just baked into games simply through their nature. Games are about escapism, and because the threats aren't real, developers can put you into all kinds of wild and dangerous situations. They can make your character fight back against threats, or make them powerless against threats, or they can split the difference and make you capable of both fight and flight. So now, I want to look at these three categories and give some examples of games that trigger these character and player reactions. Let's start by talking about games that force you down the fight path of the fight or flight reaction. I think the best example of this would be fighting games. And since I really don't play fighting games, say hello to the closest thing I can get for footage, Brawlhalla. Fighting games force you into combat against an opponent, whether they be your standard one-on-one -on -one fight like in Street Fighter, or in Super Smash Bros. style with multiple fighters. Here, you have no flee option. You and your character must stand your ground against a threat or multiple threats. You're locked in, and only your best moves will carry you to victory. The bodies of these fighters are prepped, as muscle strength and pain tolerance are increased due to the adrenaline rush. Their sense of sight is enhanced to see incoming attacks in order to react quickly. When fight is our only option, you better believe we're gonna go all out in order to survive. But other games force us down the flight path in order to survive, and for this category, I'd point mostly to horror games like Amnesia The Dark Descent. In this game, your only option is non-aggression. You aren't armed and can't fight back against the creatures lurking in the castle. The game plays on your fear by making you avoid looking at the creatures and by doing everything in your power to get away from them. Upon seeing creatures, your character's heartbeat becomes audible along with his breathing to signify the release of adrenaline within his system, but with no tools to fight back with, his only option is to run and hide. On a cheerier note, we have our friend Crash Bandicoot, who has no option but to flee during these bolder chase levels. I don't really care how strong you are, you aren't gonna stop a massive boulder rolling down a cliff at you at top speeds. You better just hope that the adrenaline rush gives you a speed boost. 
I'd say most games though fall into this final category, giving you the option between fight or flight. You as a player have to assess the situation and make a quick decision on whether you will stay and fight or flee from the serious threat. Some games give you the option sometimes while forcing you into combat at other times. Take games like Dark Souls and Hollow Knight for example. When exploring the world, you have the opportunity to take on enemies. Some are relatively easy to take down, while others provide a more serious challenge that may see you running away and returning later when you're stronger. Boss rooms, though, force you into combat against a foe that is much bigger, faster, and stronger than you. In Souls games especially, these difficult battles may even get your adrenaline pumping as a player, which mirrors how your avatar would be feeling. Games like Red Dead Redemption 2 also reflect this approach by allowing you to either choose to ride away or stay and shoot in most of the random encounters, while most of the main missions will force you down a line of combat in order to progress. Arthur Morgan reminds me of one of those people I mentioned earlier when I said that some people don't care what the threat level is, they're not going to run away, they're gonna stay and fight. I'd argue that the Deadeye mechanic in this game is also an extension of the heightened senses that Arthur would be experienced during a duel to the death with other outlaws. He remains collected during his fights. Other games maintain that level of choice between either fight or flight throughout the whole experience. In Friday the 13th The Game, you have options on how you want to handle Jason's attempts to end your existence. You can either run away, which in my experience has been a viable option, or you can turn and use your best frying pan to crack Jason in the head, which temporarily stuns him and can let you get away. I can only imagine being in that situation in real life and seeing him walk towards you with a giant weapon in hand. Your fight or flight instinct would be going crazy considering it's the middle of the night and you know that this man's intentions are extremely hostile. These kinds of conditions would scare the crap out of you and of all the games in this video, this may be the best example of a pure fight or flight reaction. And it's too bad because this game is really ugly looking and extremely clunky. but. Oh well, moving on. Multiplayer shooters also fit the mold of allowing you as a player to either exercise a fight or flight options at all times. Although fleeing in twitchy shooters like Call of Duty will almost certainly see you die. But in Fortnite Battle Royale, things are a bit different. You're up against 99 other players and it's your goal to outlive them all. A shrinking map forces you into combat but the brilliant thing about Fortnite is that you always have a chance to escape. One of the updates in Season 6 allows you to glide away off of any structure that is 3 stories or higher. What this means is that duels can start with you and a player going toe to toe, but if things get too hectic, you can build quickly and escape the fight to replenish your health. Although, don't be surprised if a good player tracks you down. It seems that the fight or flight mechanism is baked into a lot of games of many different genres, but the approach varies from title to title. Some games force you down a path while others give you the option. Either way, almost any game with intense combat or horrifying jump scares can trigger a more mild form of the fight or flight response in you the player. If any games have ever made you feel that way, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I'd also enjoy hearing about any other games with unique presentations of fight or flight, so share those as well. Thank you so much for watching, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more, and as always, have a nice day, and take care.